Are you tired of manually applying jobs, filling out the same forms, uploading the same resume, and sending the same messages to recruiters over and over again? What if I told you with just single prompts, you could get AI to open the browser for you, search for jobs, fill out job applications, and even message the right recruiters for you? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that using a tool called Browser Use, which is an open source project that's turning AI agents into your personal browser assistant for job huntings and more. This tool has already earned over 50,000 stars on GitHub, and even popular AI products like Minus are using it as a core components for their products. So with that being said, if you're interested, let's dive into the video. All right, so to get started first, we're gonna to navigate to browser use repository. And here, if we were to scroll down, you can see that there's a couple options we can choose. One is the browser use, which we can be able to run browser use in the command line, or we can be able to use the web UI version, which we can be able to control the AI agents in the browser. For simplicity, we're just gonna choose this option first. And the ones we're in the web UI version, and here are the steps we're gonna to follow to install this. So here I just opened a terminal, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to git clone the repository inside of my desktop. So I'm just gonna do git clone and this will clone the repository here and I'm just going to CD into the web UI. Now we're going to also set up the Python environment. So here you can see it is using the UV to manage the Python environment. So in that case what we're going to do is we're going to copy this command and be able to run this in the terminal. So I'm just going to run this command inside of the repository and you can see that it has created the virtual environment here. And then if you were to scroll down we also need to activate the virtual environment. So here I'm using Mac so I'm just going to copy this command, come back to the terminal and I'm just going to run this. And here you can see it has activate the virtual environment. And then we're just going to come back and try to install all the dependencies. So here I'm just going to run install Python packages. And here I'm just going to run this command to install all the packages required in the requirements.txt. Okay, so after we have everything is installed, so then what we need to do is install playwrights into our browsers. So you can either install the playwrights in a specific browser, for example, Chromium, or it can be able to install playwrights to all browsers. So here I'm just going to choose to install in all browsers. I'm just going to copy this command and come back here, install playwrights install. Okay, so once everything has been installed, then the next step is going to be configuring our environment. So we're going to create a copy of the example environment file. So what we need to do is I'm going to open the Visual Studio Code. So here you can see I have opened the repository in Visual Studio Code. And here you can see there is a .env.example file. And based on the instruction, we're just going to rename this to the .env file instead. So I'm just going to change this to the .env file. And based on this .env file, you can see that it's mostly for putting the API keys for the AI models. And for the AI API key providers, we're just going to use the open AI routers here. Because for open router, we can be able to choose any models we like. For example, DeepSeek, QWEN, Misrule, OpenAI, and such. But because running models here can be expensive, so we're going to use the free version for DeepSeek v3. So here, I'm just going to choose DeepSeek. And there is a v3.0324 uh, free. So we're just going to choose this version. And then once we're on this page, we're going to click on API. And if we were to scroll down, we're going to copy this base URL here and navigate to the repository and replace this with the OpenAI endpoint. Then we're also going to get the API key. So to do so, we're going to come back and we're going to click on the Git or Create API key. So once we're going to click on this and create a new key, we're just going to name this to Browser Use. And I'm just going to click on Create. Once it's created, we're going to copy this new key and then come back to the repository and paste the key here. And then what we can do is we can be able to start our project. So if we were to scroll down and there is a section for the usage on local setups. So we're just going to run this command here to run the web UI. So we're going to copy this and then we're just going to paste this command into the terminal. And this is what we get. So we get a local URL that we can copy and go to the browser and navigate to this URL. And then once we're on this page, you can see that this is what it displays. We have the browser use for the web UI, which controls our browser with AI Assistant. But we haven't finished setting up yet, so we're just going to click on LM settings. And here what needs to be changed is the model name. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this one right here. Because we're using the DeepSeek v3 for the free version, so we're going to copy this name. And we're just going to paste it here for the model name. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to click on Run Agent. And then here we also have the button to run the agent. And then here we also have the task description to describe what we want the agent to do. And here we have a default task, which is to go to google.com and type in uh, OpenAI and click on search, then give us the first URL. So we're just going to click on run agents to test. And right away, it basically opens a new browser on our computer and basically navigate to google.com and types in OpenAI. And you can see that we have a bunch of squares highlighted on the page. 
and this will basically feed into the AI to make decisions and be able to extract relevant information. And once we have the search results, it's going to fetch the first URL and be able to return back to the output. And back to the console, this is what we have. So you can see that we have our results display for the first URL in the search results, which is this one right here. Now back to the terminal, we can be able to see the loggings for each steps that it took for the automation. So for each steps, it gives us the exact details on what information is being extracted and what information is being fed into the AI to make decisions. If we were to look at the code inside of the browser user repository slash dom slash build dom tree.js, we do see that there is a function called build dom tree function. And this takes a dom node and basically converts it into a node data object for a given node and its descendants. So basically it uses recursions. So you can see this function basically calls it itself to do a depth first search into its dom tree to process the children nodes. Uh, there's also a highlight element function, which is the highlights that we see on the browser. So you can see that it takes the element for the dom and basically Basically, if the container has not been created, it's going to create the container by creating a div and be able to style it. And once we style it, we're also going to choose a color to highlight it on the browser that we see. And once it's highlighted, we're going to update its position. And that's why we see the highlights for each elements and buttons that we see on the page. All right, so now what if you want to use your own existing browser instance? Then in this case, you can be able to select the, this option to use your own browser instance. And then back to the repository, we also need to change the Chrome settings in terms of the Chrome path. This is going to tell browser use where our Google Chrome is located in our local machine so that we can use our own browser for the automation. And once we've done this, we also need to restart our terminal. If you want to run what we just talked about today, again, after you restart your computer, you can also cd into the right package, make sure you activate the environment, and then just run the same command that we start the browser use and this will basically start our browser use on this port we also need to restart our browser use make sure we choose the use own browser to be able to run the browser use on our own browser instance and here you can see it has opened my own chrome browser to do the automations all right so now let's get to the real stuff so how do we be able to automate applying for jobs so here you can see i'm logged into my linkedin and here we display a list of jobs so what i usually do is i basically screen record myself to apply for one of the job and be able to take this footage and upload to GPT and be able to generate a prompt that I can take this prompt and put it into the browser use AI automation agents to perform the task. So let me try to demonstrate this to you right now. So here you can see that's what I did. I start to screen record what I just talked about and be able to upload my resume. So I basically tell GPT to write me a prompt or instructions for browser use to apply for jobs. And I also have attached my resume and based on the this video footage right here, um, I want the GPT to write a prompt and instruction on what to do for browser use. And this is gonna be the starter link that is going to start to see all the job list and start applying. I'm just gonna let GPT to generate the prompt. So you can see below here we have the prompt that's generated by the GPT. It provides the starter link, the goal, on basic rules on what jobs we want to apply and what jobs we don't want to apply, as well as decision makings on what are the jobs we want to apply for. And then there's also cover letters. So we're just going to copy this. Okay, perfect. So then I'm just going to paste this to the browser use and I'm just going to click on run agent. And here you can see the AI automations start to do the work and you can see that it starts to automatically fill the information, be able to answer questions about job application. But eventually you can see that I succeeded and apply the application. And now let's see how we'll be able to apply for the next application. And you can see that we select another job because it shows that this is a remote, not a hybrid. And here you can see it just continues to apply for the job. And here you can see that it also works for jobs that are external outside of LinkedIn. So you can see that here is basically going to fill the information based on what we provided on the resume. Now you can also use this to message recruiters or sourcers in your current LinkedIn networks. So for example, for my current networks in LinkedIn, you can see that we have a list of connections and for each of the connections, I want browser use to look at their titles, their company and the jobs that they're hiring for. And based on those informations, and we also want to pass the candidate information about the resume, about what types of jobs they're looking for and to see if there's a, a match. And if there is a match, then we're gonna send a message directly to this recruiter uh, or sourcer to basically reach out to schedule the interview, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I use the same method to record the process as well as the resume attached and the prompt uh, that we're gonna ask GPT to generate the prompts that we can use for the browser use. So let's try to generate this and you can see that GPT is reading the documentations or files 
and be able to generate the prompt. All right, so after we get a prompt from GPT, uh, we're just gonna click on start agent. And you can see that it starts to do the work. And we first navigate to the LinkedIn page that we specified. And here you can see we have all the elements highlighted. And then you can see that it choose to click on the message and send the message directly on the chat window here. All right, so that's it for this video. And you can see that with just a simple prompts and the right tool, we can be able to automate our LinkedIn outreach, automatically apply for job applications in a way that can save us time using AI. And you can see that browser use can be able to automate a lot of those boring tasks that we do on the browser by just one single command. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, drop a comment if you have any questions, and don't forget to check out these videos for more automations in job search.